25,000 workers have began to strike, shutting down 36 major ports along the U.S. East and Gulf Coasts. Let's explore X for the latest. I will cripple you, and you have no idea. These people today don't know what a strike is. When my men hit the streets, from Maine to Texas, every single port, a lockdown. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries while they go one from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I'll cripple you. I will cripple you and you have no idea. Some people are criticizing Harold for that statement saying that he should not be directing this towards the people, but others on X are agreeing with his statement. Sarah Fields got an anonymous statement from a worker on the East Coast. The statement reads as follows, quote, Apparently the workers want to make what the longshoremen are making on the West Coast. Right now they're making around $40 an hour, but want approximately $66. I've been in those ports for 17 years and they're always sitting on their asses doing nothing, but want more money. Unreal. It's impacting us a little bit because some ships are not coming up, so we can't give them their oil. There are some ex exceptions. They still have to unload the perishables, but yes, everyone will be impacted by this. That's a controversial statement by this worker, but he's just telling it the way that he sees it. What do you guys think about this statement from this worker here? Do you agree with him? Do you disagree? Test Dummy 4 posted this. Port Strike Worker shows us what they are really fighting for. This is a video from LA. Let's take a quick look. I'm a longshoreman for LA Long Beach. And LA is fighting against this right here. I'll tell you right now, see that? There's nobody there. Automation, I work at an automated dock. It's no joke losing thousands of jobs so you got all these machines look at all these machines right here there's no people they ain't paying no taxes they ain't paying no money this is what ila is fighting about this all used to be filled with top handlers utr drivers clerks all this yard look how big this yard is and there ain't hardly any people on this thing this is what they're fighting about i work at an automated dock right here port of la long beach keep fighting brothers keep fighting they don't want automation. He agrees with them. I heard uh, some different arguments about this. So some people are concerned with by automating that um, we're doing something good and that it's keeping up with uh, the rest of the world, China, for instance, and that by not automating that we will lose momentum and, you know, not be one of the world's superpowers. Uh, an interesting argument. Others say it's going to just cost cost us too many jobs if we implement this across the country. So let me know what you guys think on that. DC Drano thinks that Kamala's polls are about to tank. Food won't come in. Clothing won't come in. You know how many people depend on our jobs? Half the world. Next, we have the Kobisi letter with a great thread. It's officially begun, they write. Over 50,000 port workers across the U.S. are now on strike for the first time since 1977. These ports handle nearly 40% of all U.S. imports, and it could cost the U.S. up to $5 billion per day. Let's check out their thread. For some background, port workers are on strike because of a failed contract negotiations. In June, the ILA, a union that represents port workers, suspended talks with the United States Maritime Alliance. On September 30th, the contract officially expired without a deal. U.S. imports processed by East and Gulf Coast ports. Here you can see West Coast in blue, East Coast in like a red-orange color, 38% total, and it's including machinery and equipment, chemicals, transportation equipment, minerals, base metals, precious gems and metals, textiles, and more. The Kobisi letter gave us this as well, a figure showing us the U.S. AG exports reliant on top East Coast ports. You're looking at soybeans, animal feed, hay, poultry, raw cotton, meat, grocery items, seeds, 
bread, cereal, vegetables, etc. Here we have the top U.S. imports companies exposed to impending port strike. These companies include Walmart, Ikea, Samsung, Samsung, Bob's Discount Furniture, LG, Home Depot, Continental, Tire, Hyundai, Dollar General, General Motors, and Amazon. Here's another figure. Export markets reliant on East Coast ports. You see China, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Puerto Rico among the top on the list. In this part of the thread, they talk about inflation in the 1970s and how we need to avoid a situation like that, where inflation eventually rose above 10% in the 1980s, and the 1970s weren't great either. Kobisi letters concerned with the volatility caused from uncertainty of this move. The QBC letter says if this strike lasts for a month, it could cost the U.S. over $130 billion. They're going to continue to follow it. Follow at QBC letter on X for more. Rod's Alerts published this, showing us the states that are impacted from these port workers going on strike. Mike Eagleman with a graphic as well, showing us where these ports are in the United States. Um, he says this could potentially bring down the American economy. Marjorie Taylor Greene wrote, More than 45,000 dock workers from Texas to Maine have gone on strike. Holy, this is one of the largest strikes in decades, and it's happening under Kamala Harris. Mainstream media won't show you this, but get ready for much higher inflation. They're making billions and billions of dollars on our backs. We went through COVID. Every one of you guys went to work every single day. There we go. We lost people during COVID, up and down the whole coast. We lost people because they got killed on these jobs. And these greedy bastards over in Europe, I, I hate to say it, but that's what they are, greedy corporate bastards. That one guy took $4 billion Christmas bonus for himself. And yeah, and one company, I don't want to mention their name right now, gave their employers 50 months salary at Christmas on our backs. Yeah, we're pigs. Well, let me tell you, those days are over. Yeah. I want what's right for my members, and we're going to fucking fight for it. And we're gonna... Ann Vandersteel posted this on X, and she says it's getting worse. No one is coming to save you. And she posted the Teamsters stand with the International Longshoremen's Association letter for immediate release September 30th, 2024, written by Sean M. O'Brien, the Teamsters general president. And they use some choice words. One of the quotes here, quote, the U.S. government should stay the F out of this fight and allow union workers to withhold their labor for the wages and the benefits they have earned. And then they close with this. Founded in 1903, the International Brotherhood of Teamsters represents 1.3 million hardworking people in the U.S., Canada, and Puerto Rico. Visit Teamsters.org for more information. Follow us on Twitter, at Teamsters. They deadnamed X. Grant Cardone with this message, quote, Pay the longshoremen. The U.S. pays $150 billion to fund illegal immigration and has given $250 billion to Ukraine. Pay the workers who, got, who get our goods to us or make it in America and quit importing it. A simple message there from Grant Cardone. Ryan Matta said, Kamala Harris, October surprise, PSYOP. This stock strike is all staged. Kamala will come in and negotiate a deal that saves the day. The mainstream media will make her out a hero. Bookmark this, and uh, this person's agreeing. Let's watch this video. We were just driving, we were talking about it, and uh, I had the idea or the thought, what's the odds that these union workers are going on strike, these dock workers? Because they're planning the October surprise for Kamala Harris to come in and magically negotiate a deal, get the dock workers back to work, get the unions all riled up, and then every union across America endorses Kamala. What do you guys think about that one? Here's a longshoreman's wife. Uh, Jen shared this, and it's a very interesting take. Let's listen to what she had to say. I'm getting so fucking tired of answering these stupid posts. Do you think that the longshoremen planned this six years ago when they started their contract that it was going to end right at the time that a massive fucking hurricane hit the United States? Do you think they're mind readers and, you know, somehow fucking plan this? Seriously, are, are you fucking kidding? You realize we have longshoremen in North Carolina and South Carolina that were affected by this hurricane. Now, not only do they have to deal with this hurricane bullshit, they get to deal with it without a fucking paycheck. I have already done multiple videos on this. My heart breaks for those affected by the hurricane. I am from Southeast Texas. I have lived through devastating hurricanes before. This was not planned by the longshoremen. You wanna be mad at somebody? Be mad at the companies 
that broke their last contract and automated when they weren't supposed to. They broke the contract that they signed saying that they weren't going to automate and illegally automated the truck gates, which is why the strike is happening right now. You want to be mad? Be mad at those multi-billion dollar foreign corporations that are causing this shit. Don't be mad at the fucking workers that are literally standing up for American jobs. We are literally going without paychecks to stand up to these multi-billion dollar foreign companies that are trying to control American workers and they are standing up for American jobs. We are all in this together. Do you think that this is going to affect us any differently? Do you think that because our you know husbands or families are longshoremen that we're not going to feel the pinch that this is going to cause? We will, just as much. And with no fucking paychecks. If you care about American jobs, if you care about America first, then you will stand up with our longshoremen and fight for them. Fight for American jobs. Because what these fucking foreign companies are trying to do to our workers is not okay. Again, what has happened with the hurricane is absolutely fucking heartbreaking. I cannot stress that enough. But I am tired of answering these kind of comments. He's not a fucking weatherman. He's not a fucking mind reader. He didn't plan this six years ago when they signed a six-year contract. These are hard-working Americans that bust their ass to keep this country running, to keep you supplied with the products that you need so that you can just go to the grocery store and pick them up. These guys are who keep America fucking running. You want to be mad at somebody? Again, be mad at the foreign corporations that are fucking taking over and trying to automate American jobs. End of rant. Let me know your thoughts on Sarah Shaleen's statement from TikTok. She made this because people are saying, look, we had a hurricane. We have these wars. We have the election. It's October, the October surprise. All this stuff they're saying, it's not a coincidence. This is all planned, right? And that's why she's frustrated. Let me know what you think on that. Wall Street Silver highlighted CNBC, providing absolutely no information on this. <laughs> Harris Biden Commerce Secretary. Harris Biden Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said, quote, I have not been very focused on that when asked about details on this strike and how it would affect us if it goes longer than a week. Uh, so there we go. The mainstream media folks. That's why we're on X and that's why we're here sharing information. Uh, absolutely useless. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about all this. I'm Vince Taglavia. This is the best of X. See you next time.